Hi, I'm Mario Evan, and you're listening to Talk Trot, a weekly inspired edutainment podcast discussing the things that most people are afraid to, but from a Jamaican perspective. From relationships, sex and sexuality, to the ins and outs of entrepreneurship, in this space we speak about almost anything with the intention to inspire, educate, entertain, and create a fair and balanced space where your truth shall become your power and set you free. Yo, family, you're listening to Talk Truth. This is your boy, Mario. Everyone, you done it. Go already. Yo, we're going to kick off this episode with the answers to last, last week's Truth Bomb. And the Truth Bomb question was, tell me your worst bathroom slash toilet slash porta experience. That's porta party, right? I told you mine in episode 13. If you want to hear that, you're going to have to go listen to the episode. I think it's at the end. But I'm going to kick it off anonymously with the stuff people said on IG story. All right, somebody said, I skipped a long line of irate girls into a porter in a drunken stupor and promptly fell asleep for an hour. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. So I guess you fell asleep in the porter after skipping the girls. Mm. This one is very interesting, but you know what? I promised to read them, so I'm going to read them to you. You guys can interpret this however you want because I may not even understand it myself. The person says, boring, a friend and I crossing swords to pee. Some idiot shook the porter we peed on our pants. There's a lot of questions here. I mean, I know what a sword is. Crossing swords to pee. Apparently, there's two people in a porter party peeing into one porter hole. And somebody shook the porter from outside, causing them to pee on themselves. There are lots of questions to be answered here. I don't know why two of you were sharing a porter. That's all good. That's none of my business. That's very interesting. On to the next one. Um, this person says that I was at a charity night run event, Porta Luz in the semi dark under a light post. Very icky, very smelly. All right. Well, this is typical Porta life in Jamaica. You know, it's never ever like luxury Porta. Rarely ever luxury Porta. All right. This one person says my phone has gone swimming in my toilet way too many times. Guess you got a good phone. I bet you have one of them good up phone there. We're kind of waterproof. Yo, you probably have a OnePlus 6 or something. OnePlus we say. We'll defend the iPhone too. Sometime. All right. This person says, Wee wee truck at the back of the fed. Slam. Brakes. Mid squat. Ladies flew out the stall. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's really funny to me because I kind of see, if you know the porta part of them were there at the back of carnival, right? Now imagine now, she said that it slammed, the truck slam brakes, she mid squat and the ladies flew out the stall. Luckily those are the indoor, those are a little bougie, so you're actually not on the outside. So they probably flew out the stall into the area just outside the porta, which would be like the area in front of the sink. That one is pretty good. And the last one is, went into a porta during a night party and had to pee so bad I didn't realize it was full of poop. I don't know about, well, let me tell you, this person living at the U.S., I don't know about the U.S. port of them, but the Jamaican port of them often have poop in them, you know, I don't know, especially way down at the party there when people don't bum up them port of them. Anyway, thank you guys for your truth bombs. I appreciate them. I know I would get less this week because people don't like talk about them bathroom habits. We're going to have five. Well, guess what? I'm just going to get right into the episode and we're going to do next week's truth bomb answer question at the end of this episode so stay tuned and listen through and then you'll get your truth bombs down at the end yo yo welcome to episode number 14 of talk truth and guess what we're doing we're going into relationship zone and today i don't have a specialist but in a way she's a specialist because you know everybody who's been in a relationship is kind of a specialist i have a friend with me her name is shari lee crooks and today we're going to talk about the 90 day rule shari welcome to talk truth thank you mario shari who you be you don't have to tell them where you do all of these things <laughs> who are who is shari um shari is a dancer mm -hmm. a daughter a free spirit and a lover of all paths to love and light mm. did you just come up with that <laughs> yes, on the spot i did you really are creative for true Wow, I really like that. That was beautiful. And, I, and you know, I mean, it's kind of like when people talk about careers, you shouldn't define yourself by a career mm -hmm. because that's not really who you are. It's just something that you do. Right. 
let's jump straight into this. Sure. And um, today we're talking about the 90 day rule. And what I'm going to have you do is you tell me what you think the 90 day rule is since you, you know about this. Okay. Well, the 90 day rule is something um, that Steve Harvey put in his book that everybody knows the name of that book by now. Act like a lady, think like a man. He had an entire chapter dedicated to it. Um, the genesis of the concept was he was saying before he was getting into stand-up comedy, right. he worked at the Ford Motor Company. And when they hired him, um, one of the provisions was that he's on 90 days of probation. After that, they'll decide if he keeps his job and if he gets some of the other benefits, insurance, car, upkeep, those kinds of things. Right. So when he was looking into writing the book, really geared towards women and how they can succeed more in their relationships... He really said that, you know, one of the main benefits, the main benefit of the relationship, the most important benefit is when a woman decides to give her body to the man in question. That's what he, that's how he said it. Right. That it's really the ultimate benefit. So just like if that man were to go on a job, he would have to wait 90 days to get benefits. To get the benefit. He should have to wait 90 days right. to get so, the benefit. So she a whole lamp on the benefits in 90 right. days. That, that's the man prob- that's for his relationship. Proba- yeah, that's his probation period. And we know that this book was really Steve's Harvey way, Steve Harvey's way of mm. trying to give women a gift from men because really? he was trying to put them in the mind of the man. Right. But it was really the mind of Steve, which right. he's assuming represents men. Right. Anyway, I'll counter some of that. <laughs> Alright, so fine. 90 days before you can get your benefits of sex in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So these are people who are what? They're dating? Yeah, well, yes. Um, usually it's about, it was really geared towards having a lasting relationship. It wasn't necessarily about people who are, are having, I guess you could say, casual relationships. It's right. really lasting relationships. So two people who have met who well, are getting to know each other right. with the intention of going further to the next level. Lasting right. relationship, hopefully to marriage, maybe right. long term. Right. In our situation, maybe one good, good, come on, our relationship. Right. Exactly. Um, but not like a casual encounter thing. So you right. can't really have 90 day rules with like multiple people. What does that Well, work? no. You well, could, no. You I probably mean, could. You could if you want to. But, but it's that would really be very interesting. Yes, it's really But no, that, that's not the concept. No, it's really that you want this long-lasting relationship with this person. So you're really giving them a time to prove themselves to right. you. Right, we apply for this job and this, this job alone. Job and alone. we do the probation for that person right. alone. 90 days. All right, so at the core of it, do you think that abstaining mm-hmm. for 90 days while dating is something that is even sensible? Yes, I mean, abstaining in general because a lot of, there are a lot of people, when you listen to a lot of people who've been in long-term relationships, who have survived a lot of tumultuous relationships, they will tell you that there is an effect that comes with sleeping, with having sex with a person. Whether it is early or not, there is a, a connection that is formed that is hard to get over. So there are a lot of problems. You probably stay longer than you need to because the sex with you, there's a lot of that too. And you create a lot of complications that don't need to be there when you have that sex early. So there could be benefits to it, but I don't think there's a hard and fast. I will get more into whether it's hard or fast, but, right. but back to that first point that mm-hmm. you made, this is the problem with sex, is that sex in and of itself is an experience that can be so pleasurable mm-hmm. that you then tie it into all of these false emotions that aren't mm-hmm. really real. Right. When I think people need to really try to um, align with foundational things. Exactly. Naturally. And then there's and, but, a way... But isn't sex one of the foundational things? It could be if it's important to both of you. If right. it's important to both of you. And it's, import- it's more important that you find out if you are compatible, if you share core values before you throw, well the sex is good in there. Well, that's going to bring me to another question, though. Mm -hmm. Do you think that relationships can or should survive on core values before sex? So what if everything line up? Uno uno like go to the same church. Mm -hmm. Uno like the same movies. Uno like dance. Mm -hmm. Are those not core values? Uh, Uno (laughs) handle money. Handle money the same way. Religion is the same way. Right. Um, Let's see. Um, You guys probably have similar views in terms of how you want to raise children. Mm -hmm. You find all of these things Mm -hmm. work out. Mm -hmm. And then let's say, for instance, now you get married and then sex is terrible. Mm -hmm. You're locked in, don't? Yeah, because you're married. (laughs) You got all the way to married. That's a little tricky. I know, right? I got all the way to the conclusion. Yes, you got all the way to the end first. To the end first. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go backtrack. Back into the dating. Mm -hmm. 90 day rule. Wow, I don't know how I feel about this because I feel like there are two sides of the coin. I feel like relationships are so 
haphazard mm-hmm. that you may get lucky and you could meet mm-hmm. your soulmate and have sex with them on day five mm-hmm. and it's you nice. guys remain together for mm-hmm. a long time i wouldn't and say then, haphazard i'd say it's more I think there are more nuances to a relationship than whether or not you had sex day nine, day 19, or day 90. Right. I think there is more that goes into whether or not you can sustain a functional, happy relationship that isn't going to be functional and happy every day because people are people and things happen. So people will be not so nice on some days and you have to sustain it. You have to use other things to sustain it. But I think um, there's... There needs to be a commonality in terms of what you both want in that relationship. And then if that, if the common purpose aligns, then whether or not you have the sex day 9, 19 or 90 will it, be an aside, really. But then, well, it sounds then like the fundamental of, of the interaction of a relationship is that these two people... The question is, how fast do we get to knowing what our fundamental things are? And I mm-hmm. think maybe what Steve is trying to imply... That by 90 days, you'll know you should have a fair idea as to whether this person aligns enough, right? For you to give up the chocha, fair enough. But that is if you both want that. Hmm. It depends on how you meet and where you are in your life. Suppose you're not necessarily looking to find your forever now at this point, then 90 days is too long. But in my experience, my Oh, you say 90 days is too long if you're not trying to if find forever. If you're not forever. trying to find so forever, you're just you're trying just to get in there and do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. But in my actual true relationship experience, mm-hmm. I found that one and a half, especially two years, was a critical point right. for whether relationships last or not. Yes. In, in my ex- my relationship experience, I found that at two years, you really figured out whether somebody was there for you or, or not, or whether you really, really loved them enough to stay. Right. But two years is a long time, you know. Yeah, it is a long time, which is why I think 90 days kind of, it's kind of arbitrary and inorganic, really. I think in terms of when the sex happens between two people, whether or not those people will be together forever or if this will just be a good time for both of them, it should be when it naturally feels like it should happen between the two of you and not when after you've expired the clock. Because you're probably, depending on how you interact in that 90 days, you might not know him well enough. Or know her well enough, it, depending on what you want to know. You might not. But or you might know them well by day 60 and you go, well, I have 30 more days to it. All right. So you might get there before. You may or may not get there after. Mm-hmm. But what if me naturally feel for our sex after 48 hours? What if both of we feel that naturally have sex? Then we'll come right back to too early to really be certain. To know each other. So there is some value to our time system. There could be, yes. Because I really feel like a lot of people... When you meet someone, the first thing that you like is how they look. Naturally. But when I meet couples who want to do things like mutual testing and figure out Mm -hmm. whether you have syphilis and Mm -hmm. gonorrhea and these Mm -hmm. things, that that is very admirable to me because I feel like a lot of people are going to be in the sack before we do a STI testing. Before you find that out, right. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Very, 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 very tricky. What 90 days is, I don't know, because depends on if, depends on the intention it really boils down to the intention of both of those people because even if you don't tell the person that okay you're on 90 day probation because usually you don't tell them you're kind of just waiting it out to see what they reveal they can be on their best behavior that's probably the 90 days where you get their representative i got you so this is what the woman is actually doing so the 90 day rule is actually being put into effect mm. and the man don't know that is mm-hmm. going on so you're probably counting in your calendar to see what's going to happen, when he's going to ask for it, if he's going to ask for it, if he's going to keep getting to know you before asking for it. All right, but how do we truly identify someone's intentions, 90 days aside? Like when you are actually dating for the first time, mm-hmm. what are some of the qualities that you look for in a man to kind of decipher whether you think he's really here for you or here for the... Well, well how he plans... Or time together or if he plans it at all. Mm. If it's kind of like a, I'll see you when I see you, then yeah. I know, okay, if he sees me, he sees me, but he's not going to go out of his way or try and plan to see me. That's different. If he plans it, but how he plans it. And like you link me and you say, what are you doing Friday? And I said, nothing. What am I doing Friday? Say, you want to go somewhere? Where is somewhere? 
and you don't know where the somewhere is. Right. You haven't decided. Right. You haven't come to me and said, okay, Friday night, you like this movie, you like dinner, you like party, what do you really like? And then I say, I will tell you. And then he says, okay, how you feel about movie Friday and then dinner? Or you want dinner first and then movie? And you let me decide. If it's just kind of, we're all going all somewhere, you can come, I see you, I see you, then that's different. So you think that true, genuine intention is tied to a mutual respect for time? Yes, and, and interest. You want to see me, you care about seeing me. If I say, okay, no, I can't make Friday because I'm doing this, that, and that, and the conversation ends, okay, then you did only, you only, I was only worth the one shot. But right. suppose you say, okay, all right, um, how does your Saturday look? How does next week look? Are you okay with weekdays? The effort is fine. All There's right. effort. So if you just call me and say, I see you when I see you, then I see you when I see you. So we have interest in seeing you, mm -hmm. and then we have actual active planning, mm -hmm. and uh, I aim to actually get to a conclusive time. Kind of like Shari, you want to record this podcast episode with me today? Are you free? Yes. And then you're like, I'm free on these days. Are you free at this time? Exactly. And that's how you end up in the episode, right? Exactly. And that's exactly you end up in a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you think that's too high of an expectation to have? What if the guys kind of lose? What if they're like a free spirit? What if him not, not lose like lose? But like, what if they're like a free about his approach to life and he's not so organized and structured? It's not necessarily organized and structured. I don't necessarily think it, that you need to have the itinerary down. Right. But it's more of a, I want to see you and spend time with you. Fine. Even if you don't know for sure, what exactly we're going to be doing. We're meeting up at this time, at this place. And we see if anything happens beyond that, that's fine. It's not necessarily a, we're going to do this at this time, and then this, and then this, and then we'll have a question and answer to see how it went. That's <laughs> not, not Maybe necessary. send them like a survey monkey. Exactly, survey. it's not necessary. You I just think all say, relationships should have survey monkey as a part of it, no? Exactly. <laughs> You're just saying, okay, let's meet up here. Let Even if it's a case where you don't want it to be super, super like intimate, so you go somewhere casual. So I meet you there. It's not right, like right, a pick right. up, it's take a public, public right. place. So it's a public place. We sit down. We talk, we eat, we buy ice cream, do whatever. All right, let's continue to play out this particular guy. He mm -hmm. is one with intention. He's identified a date time. Mm -hmm. You guys have gone on your first date. Mm -hmm. And you actually like it. And it's a vibe. And him seem to have a vibe too. You guys still talking on WhatsApp in the evening, you know, make sure that you get home safe if you never did drop you home. Mm -hmm. And um, next morning, him still I talk to you. We are like at day five. Okay. This is worth pursuing at the moment, you yes. would say, right? Yes. All right. Um, let us say you guys realize you have a very strong physical chemistry. Mm -hmm. At this point, are you as a woman inadvertently are trying to apply the 90-day rule? Are you applying some rule? Um, well, I, I don't think and I've I'm, thought about it I'm yet. assuming that the sex rule for women will vary from woman to woman. Right. So let us assume you are looking for a relationship mm -hmm. and he's looking for a relationship. Mm -hmm. You strong, sex, strong, strong sexual chemistry, mm -hmm. one date, day five. You mean if the 90-day rule has started? It started, may I ask? Is there any rules yet? Probably are you, not, Are you, no. are you wait to see if him asks? <laughs> well, no, it's not really a way to see if him asks because it's really... Because it depends. Um, I like him, he likes me, it's obviously there. But it could just be depending on the situation we could have had one really good date we had two weeks you've gone you've seen him almost every day since you've met him mm -hmm. you're two weeks in now um maybe you've kissed mm -hmm. uh, and you're alone netflix one friday night and maybe a pseudo chill i don't know mm -hmm. i would have, could i lean to the lead to the chill mm -hmm. what if it feels like he's naturally progressing to heating up on that couch do you allow it to go through or or not? This is very personal now. So this is Well, the it thing depends now. on the conversations we've had during those two weeks. If they're still guarded, like in terms of we haven't discussed certain conversations yet. We're still doing the what flowers you like, what color you like, where you're going to school, what's your family like. We haven't had a conversation like how you feel about this or how you feel about something that's important to either of us and is probably still pretty surface maybe not what would some of those things be for you as a woman specifically what are kind of things that you that would be important to you in a long-term relationship um, that would come up in two weeks 
Mm, come up. Well, you see, I, I like to bring things up early, you know. And I'm like you, I like to get straight to I like I like to bring things up early because if if how you feel about something is going to be a deal breaker for me, I don't want to waste any of my time. So if I already like you, I have to know how much I'm going to like you before I invest further than right, the two right, weeks. Right, right, so right. if we've been talking for the two weeks and I say something like, hmm, misogyny is a thing I can't stand. So if I say something... Um, related to maybe women's lib w- or like women a, in the workplace or right. something like that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you get a and I get a response a that's a little that's a little tricky for me. Then I say, oh, okay, that might that might be funny, or I say something like, oh, I was on the phone with my mother for an hour and a half or something like that, and he and his his response is, do you always talk to your mother? How close are you to your family? And it kind of sounds a little like. He's not happy about, he's not how, happy close about how close I am or why am I always talking to my mother. That, that might, might be yeah, a thing. A that might be a thing for me as well. Because mm-hmm. by now I would have asked, are you close to your mother? Do you live with your daddy? Do you know who he is? Do you live with your family? Right. I, I have asked do you all, have all of those questions. Do you, yeah, do you have any children? Do you have what do you HIV? do for a living? <laughs> like I've <laughs> asked those questions. What do you do for a living? Who do you live with? If you live with your parents, is that on purpose? Is that a save money thing? Is that a, you're, you're just on their couch being a bum? Like what are you doing? But how do you, how did you go about getting these questions? You go gently or like I would just summarizing for, for the episode. Are you go hard or like... But this it is depends. also part of them getting to know yeah, you because they would have Yeah, because they would have... Right, because they would have asked me... If we've done date three or whatever, they would have asked me, so what do you do? What do you like? And I would have asked, what do you do? What do you like? Where right. do you live? Do you live with family? Do you not live with family? What's your view on living with family? Do you own a home? Do you own a car? Do you owe anybody any money? Like those sorts of things you ask. You ask direct questions up front. And if, because the earlier you know those things, is the less time you would have invested in something that you find out is a red flag down the road. You, right. you don't find out everything naturally because you do get to know yourself over time, let alone another person over time. But you ask, you say, all right, how you feel about this? How you feel about that? Do you have any children? No. Do you plan on having children? What if your partner don't want any children? How do you feel about, okay, right now there was a, like right now, the topical issues whether or not women should have abortions. Say we talk about that. Say it was on the news that day and I bring it up. Right. And it's something that I find, oh, that's a little sexist. That might be tricky for me. Then you have those conversations early. But again, you kind of know what your deal breakers are. Mm-hmm. Because again, what if this guy is just really, really, really wonderful? Mm-hmm. And it's just that like, that one thing. I won't call it a little thing. It could be a big thing. It could be a big it thing. It could be yeah. the one big thing. Right. And that might be it. Eh? Yeah, it really could be it. Well, not for us to change the topic, but the 90 day rule really is a conversation about dating anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like the 90 day rule applies to Jamaica? Because a lot of times when I get into dating conversations in Jamaica, we hear that Jamaicans don't know how to date. Mm-hmm. What is dating in Jamaica? Which is probably what is dating in many cultures. Too. Right. But I don't know if we know how to date. True. Because most of my male female interactions growing up is kind of like once you decide there's some potential intimate connection to mm-hmm. this linking up mm-hmm. physicality soon comes or soon follows right and if you as a man halt that that's very odd for a woman because a woman expect that a jamaican man going just take care of her thing quick especially if she's in the same space so if she wants it and you don't that's odd um if you want it and she doesn't that's not so odd because she might be holding out 90 day rule or, or otherwise or otherwise right all right, so sorry. You see how you just get me passionate. All right, back. So do Jamaicans, do we know to date? I mean, does 90 day rules apply to Jamaican? Um, it probably applies, but we probably don't call it that. And again, it's going to be contextual. You think it people in a, oh gosh, I was going to say in a Christian circumstance, but they shouldn't be having sex anyway until <laughs> they're married. So we'll, we'll pull them out of this again. Um, but we know a lot of people mm-hmm. do mm-hmm. attend the church. And do have sexual relations mm-hmm. and say a prayer after. Yeah, of let me course. do it. Let and me say yes. it. You're not forgetting that is. <laughs> let me take the back. Let me take the stone in. <laughs> we know the people in the church having sex. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I think if I was a Christian worried about backsliding from a sexual perspective, I think the 90 day rule would actually be really good for me. You know what I mean? Because I feel like it would at least set some kind of micro boundary Mm -hmm. to the macro boundary of abstinence right because it really okay well see if you're gonna say 
maybe it's a Christian faith based thing, then you could have a conversation about that very early and decide if you're abstaining in general. When together. I think, I think if it's Christian faith based, mm-hmm. ideally you should be abstaining. That's what yes. I, uh, that is me, my assumption. I right. got textbook, an- textbook answer, but right. we know the reality of that. Right. Is that that's not what always happens. Mm hmm. Um, all right, so you bring up the whole other point. So a lot of this comes down to having conversations early. So it really comes down to how willing people are to have conversations Right, and how early. honest they want to be because that's, tr- that's the thing, you know. As you said, the first thing that happens is the physical. Like when, it's something I say all the time. When that man sees you in a party, him see you in a dance, him see you at a club, him, him see you at a, a friend, wine. get together, yeah, whatever. whatever. He doesn't cross the room and go, that girl looks smart. <laughs> That's not why he's talking to you. Right. It, that, that has been well established. Right. Him don't cross a, him she, don't cross a room she, for your brain. She even looks, if She looks like she handles her money well. Right. Even, <laughs> if, even if he's not shallow. Right. That's not why he's talking to you. Uh, you see what I'm saying? You're absolutely correct. Right. So you're saying, so part of the issue is when you, when you have been approached, he's already decided he feels a certain way about you physically. Right. That's just the animal so that's, kingdom. That's just how that is. That's mm-hmm. how the attraction works. Mm-hmm. So it's really, do you succumb to that part of it first? Right. Because it's obviously already there because right. the approach has been made. Worse if you don't go start dance and then and they have a, a dance in chemistry. A then it's a whole mess. That's a whole mess. Yeah. So do you want to go there or do you want to say, hmm, does this chemistry just translate to other situations? into a relationship or was it like a one night chemistry kind of thing so it's really an intention thing he already has an intention the minute him cross and talk to you so what is it that you want to fulfill that off top and is he going to be honest about that like maybe more men are are not willing to say that's all i come for right because they probably won't get any if they do it that way Right. So they're they're not going to be fully honest about whether or not that's all they want. And then more women might be more timid about saying, I want a relationship because that kind of just makes men go, okay. And run. She's trying to marry me and I don't know her. So everybody's kind of hiding under some Everybody's veil, kind of afraid. So he might just might want, want that, but and not want to say and it. And she might want a relationship, and she but she don't want to run away. And she don't want to say that either. like a decent, good, upstanding boy mm-hmm. will have a job, but he right. really just want the nookie. Right. And you don't want to, and nobody wants to have those difficult conversations. At the beginning. But then at the end of the day, say you instill the 90 day rule he doesn't know and he checks he's checking all your boxes and it's day 89 and you cannot wait and day 91 him gone out in business that's three months of your life that you waste you know because yeah. you have invested and you were waiting the 90 days too and then the, then the sex happened and then him leave and then him gone same way that's all he wanted anyway but then at least he knows one liar boy me for going True, I just hope him don't give him no disease yeah, or no baby exactly but that's what I'm saying is that you will keep doing the three months the three months the three months if you're, if you're not more upfront, off top in terms of what exactly you want out of this relationship it's okay if you just say I don't and then that's another thing too is that which is something Steve Harvey actually says in that book as well. When he tells him don't want you, believe him. So if you ask him and him say him don't want to be with anybody, don't say, okay, I'm going to restart the 90 days and think that after he's had the sex with you, it will, it will undo the lack of desire that he expressed in the beginning. And when he, he, he doesn't want to be with anybody, he means he just didn't want to be in a relationship to right, start with. So he was transparent. With. So he was transparent and you're just going to be like, Maya Angelo, give me a second. But no. When somebody shows you who they, they are, are, you believe them, believe the, them first the first time. time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never let a man tell him don't want him more than one time. I agree with that too. And I feel like women have great difficulty wrapping their head around that because they again feel that men are so hardwired for sex that they cannot actually make a conscious decision to not want them. Not That could be it, but it also could be that there's more societal pressure for a woman to be with somebody so it could just be a thing where um and there's more societal pressure for a man for for just have sex exactly exactly so what um the world at large i guess expects out of that interaction is different for everybody in terms of the woman the women are expected to want the relationship and to want this happily ever after two and a half children picket fence excitement and they feel pressure to want that 
and they do okay he doesn't want it but he he's not supposed to want it i'm the one that's supposed to want that anyway right, so right. let me stick around and see how this works and it could be that how you feel about the reverse i mean do you think we kind of said it all about do you think it's unusual for a man to set a 90 day rule as i said with some of the woman who is the one holding out do you think it's unusual for i wouldn't say it's unusual but we don't call it that because men can want relationships too and men don't necessarily but they don't necessarily say i'm going to wait to see who she is maybe he wants to like her first and that's fine right that right. does happen I think it does happen, probably less so than the other yeah, way Yeah, and he probably doesn't call it that. But also, I think, again, it comes down to societal expectations. Mm. And not just expectations, what actually happens in, mm. real, in real life. In real life, A lot right. of times, women sometimes want more. The men come in for one thing, or when they get it, they disappear. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about women who want sex too. Exactly. There are women out there who are not looking for a relationship, who just want to smash, as my friend in the States would say. <laughs> and um, they might be coming in just to get that. Exactly. But you think, the thing about it is that men don't usually feel um, taken advantage of. Exactly. When a, when a woman throws themselves exactly. at them. Exactly. You know, you feel actually pretty great. It's, exactly. u- it's usually how society has armed us to feel. Exactly. Oh wow, so this it's, is tricky. It's, it's, it's very, very tricky. But it's it it it's it's things that can be avoided if you're both honest. And it's really come down to if you're both honest about it. If two grown adults are having grown conversations before they do grown people business, then we can decide what, what we're doing here. If I just want to have sex with you and you just want to have sex with me, and we do that off top and we go our separate ways. And if it's one of those things where you have an arrangement where in the middle of the night i call you or you call me and that happens and you are both okay with that until one or both of you are engaged elsewhere that's also fine but that's something you talk about and not enough people want to say those things off top not enough people want to say that because they don't want to deal with the repercussions of saying it because whether it will be whether it's good or bad or, or whether whatever. she'll take offense whether he'll take offense but sometimes you just need to say the truth right you just say it off top because here's what it is even if it's a situation where you you say the truth and she she says okay hold on challenge accepted you cannot whatever happens after you right. sleep with her cannot be held against, against you, you know right. she she might try to do it but and it, there but, are women who do it who say honest, you can imagine that I do all of this for him and him still never dealt with me but, but to be completely to it, honest yeah, you would know say him say from the he jump he told you say from never off no top it was this was all this was going to be he said it to you and be completely honest. And that's also the thing too. We're not honest with the role we play when we are we are heartbroken People by are somebody. People are very dishonest. Yes. Me running at that too, and I was very upfront about what it was. Mm-hmm. But of course, I think some women are very hell-bent on trying to change a man into what yeah, they want cha- him yeah, to be. Yeah, very challenge, challenge accepted. And then <laughs> they rule mashup. So that mm-hmm. mashup, so we're already in the thing. It happening. And then there's this expectation that apparently, what actually... It seemed like I was supposed to come back and revisit. That's what I was told. That it was my job to revisit where we were. To 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 check in with the lady to make sure that things hadn't changed. I'm like, no. No, I whatever declared my fir- hand. Yeah, whatever was my first contract, it don't change unless unless we had a conversation about it together. Mm, but right, I never feel I, like I need to responsibly come back and be like, well, guess what? I haven't started to have feelings. No, we're no. the same place I was before. Yeah, you showed your hand from early. From early. From early. So that's that's and really And then somebody what it always is. gets hurt. Somebody always gets hurt. Yeah, but that's that's also too is that your hurt comes from your expectations and sometimes those expectations don't come from the other person. You have created them. Of course. All on your own, by yourself. And now you're holding them responsible for something you never gave them a chance to respond to because you decided that all on your own that this is where this was going to happen and neither of you had that conversation. You talked to yourself about it. You decided on your own about it unilaterally. And when he said, okay, I'm out. Now you vex. But you never give him a chance to talk about it. You decided on your own you wanted that from him and he never wanted that from you and you never gave him a chance to say don't want that from you and i agree right you uh, you have your conversations and then that's that's so completely let's talk different. a little bit more about protection because clearly the 90 day rule is designed to try and get you from getting into a sticky situation mm-hmm. um what were are some other things that you think would be protective and you just said one which was to limit your expectations right without knowing information right mm-hmm. yeah you just wait until you know yeah. You just wait until you know. 
because you can't always be a hundred percent sure. Yeah, you some could people, be. some With people, for years and in them show you another side. Some people reveal themselves years after when say after you have your first child. Yeah, man. Say don't. he say he's not super possessive, and as soon as you you have your first all baby, all of a sudden he's a different person he waited 20 years before me lay a hand on you know yeah, what we, you're supposed to do with this like that's a whole we different watch thing those shows exactly CBS. you yeah. can't plan for every single eventuality right but oh for the general scope because those things are outliers in general people are who they are and they don't really get better they kind of right. just they kind of just they, they improve they but improve, on their own but, but on their own yeah. exactly they have to grow and change and evolve by themselves but people kind of are who they are so that is a that's another thing too is that you probably don't iron down like alone time right off top right so say for example suggest see how he feels about like a general meetup first I'm see how he interacts with you in front of people casually before it's like just on you and him alone each other. right and then if you introduce him and to some friends exactly and vice versa and mm-hmm. then it's just like okay let's all let say you met him in a public setting with say you have mutual friends you found out that you have mutual friends so then you would already kind of know how that exactly work so you mm-hmm. just said okay i invited so and so and so and so from the place that we all met let's all go there together see right. how he feels about that does he say okay but you're rolling with me we'll all hang out and see how that hangout goes first like right. in a social setting without the two of you or is he rushing off top to just be you and him alone maybe that's a little tricky for you because it's like i don't really know you and i'm right. not comfortable you just off get a new, the top. Your new apartment and he want to come, and visit, want to come to visit you at your yard no. and you don't know him and i don't know you and you're trying to be defensive about being in public maybe not so you kind of do that you do the group thing first if you have mutual friends run some recon do any of your girlfriends know him? Right, right. Have right, they heard right. about him? <laughs> it might be a lie, but it, no, it Yo, don't hurt. The recon Ask thing, the nice questions. thing about here, well, we do not recon. I'm you do not the, recon. The biggest recon right there now on social media. Of course. It, you, worse if your profile open. Listen, and if I have an open profile, do you profile, know how many people, you know how much man look me out and party, follow me on Instagram and write on their Instagram page is their girlfriend of two years, happy anniversary, babe. Come on now. Oh, wow. That's easy to do. Oh, wow. Easy. Because not all of them are as slick as they look. Wow. Check. Wow. Just check, boo. <laughs> check. Do you have any mutual friends? Check their mutual friends. See, it's easy to run up alone. I love the recon conversation because yeah. Jamaica is so small, it though it's is. easy to do recon it's on people. It's easy to do recon. Oh, especially within certain um, circles. Certain circles. And if you met him at a certain parties, place, yeah, you then you know who and who them might know, know him. Right. Exactly. So you just do it. Granted, as you said, maybe that person knew him or her at a different point in their life and right. they have a so different you perspective to, you don't so you them. don't necessarily want to color it but you want to have something in the back of your mind that okay that looked a little suspicious if we ever get close enough maybe i want to ask about that I'm how right. that happened if somebody tell me something if me hear something twice about somebody when we just meet and it's from a good friend i'm not going to say i'm not going to give the person a chance mm-hmm. but may i talk it way yeah, Somewhere it's, in, in, it's in my mind. It's in the middle part. It's not, not the, back. the back. Yeah, not the back. In it's the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah. So that when, when you actually meet them, you can evaluate whether you feel this is a quality that really uh, exactly. exists. Exactly. And then there's another thing too. Like, um, we've always had this conversation about whether or not he pays for the date or not. That's a conversation you have off top too. Like, when you finally do that one-on-one date, do you talk about that beforehand? Is that important to you that he pays for you? It's not necessarily important to me, so okay. It should be a conversation, but, but I it think, should definitely I think be if a conversation. If you don't discuss it, though, it can probably impact the ninety-day rule too. Of because course, because right up in the top, you will know whether it's a brother where I go fuck out for the movie and the food, or I'm going to say, "Yo, my girl, and I'll pay for the food." Right, or, and it will let you know exactly what type of person he is to where yeah. or where his pocket is, mm-hmm. or whether he just prefers to be fair. Right, because remember, there's that whole conversation too. You know, we're women where men always you see it on social media all the time it comes up every couple of months that women we know you're only here for the food (laughs) like every now and then it's like you're only here for the sex and i'm here for the food right like i'm here to get free food out of you let's just see how this goes kind of thing so you have that conversation early like when he's taking you out do you ask beforehand are you paying for this am i paying for it ask oh i ask that i don't mind having these conversations but it can be very uncomfortable for some people no i don't wait until i get there and it's time to pay you know because i don't need i don't need it to be a i don't need it to be like a big blow up when we get there right so say for example 
if I didn't get to have that conversation, I'm not going anywhere that I can't afford whatever I'm ordering because right, I'm very right, I'm prideful right. like that. The next thing you got red bones and you have to and, pay half of that. And I can't pay for it. <laughs> exactly. I'm not I don't take shame like that. I'm right. not doing it. So what I will I will get there and then when it comes I will order it. When the bill is coming, I go go in my purse and if he goes he goes, what are you doing? What are what you, you doing? doing? I'm saying, no, no, I got this. And then I said, okay, Julie noted. I'm glad you know about the going on the purse. Plan. No, man, I important always do it. For the, just reach for the purse. I always do it. Whether you're going to pay or not, just reach for the purse so I've I can say no. To, I've gone to KFC and I'm going in the line and I'm going to stop your foolishness. And I said, it's KFC though. And he said, stop your foolishness. And we said, ah, yeah, and no, KFC. No, man, you bro, have to, no, no you, man, go broke you don't, them. you don't just sit down. When the bill comes, you just sit down and you just look at him. I'm going to see if he pays for this chicken. Right. I'm going to see if he pays for this chicken. No, I have already decided based on, which is usually if he asks me where you want to eat, I don't pick anywhere that if there's something on the menu that I can afford. Right. I pick a place. And I'm picking that well, one thing one, I know smart, I girl, can huh? eat. You're so when smart, I go, girl. I say, okay, I want this and this because I've already decided I can run my card for that. I can afford this. So when I go and I take my purse out and he goes, Shari, stop it. Yeah, you know, so you get vexed and covered. I, I said, cool, no problem. He has paid for it. Now we can talk because now it has happened. And let me rephrase. Let me, sorry, let me just not call it a get vexed. It's your money. You were, you're willing to pay for it. Exactly. It's only a get vexed if you never really plan exactly. for pay for it from exactly. the exactly. beginning. Exactly. So then we now we can talk about right. it. It has come up. I right. said, so how do you feel about that in general? Are you generally a, I got this type of person? Right. Because that could be a thing. That could be something that could cause problems. You ask uh, off top because maybe he's paying for this one date because this is date one but and he wants to be he, exactly. Yeah. So now I need to ask: Is this a normal thing for you? Like, do you do you insist that you pay for it? Because then I I just go, but I want to pay for things. All right, Shari, we could come down to our conclusions on the ninety day rule. I think our listeners probably really have heard our individual intentions, mm-hmm. and we're and I think we align in terms of how we feel. Right. But all right, so important things. Um, maybe you could find a gem in less than ninety days. You could. Maybe it may take longer. It could. Uh, maybe you might get a dub. And you might get a dub in less than ninety days, or a dub in more in on day ninety one. Exactly. But the important things that we say we need to do is ha- be honest. Right. Um, have open and upfront conversations early. About, early about things that matter to both of you. Mm-hmm. Don't have expectations of someone you don't know. Right. Don't try to change them. Right. What I leave out. And let it happen organically when it happens. Right, so organically, it could be in less than 90 days it or more be. than 90 it days. Could, and you shouldn't beat longer. up yourself if it's less. Because exactly. maybe it might feel right. And that could be a hobby or a wifey. Exactly. Or it might take six months. It could. It really could. Whoever there, is waiting there six is months no, to have sex Whoever it is. I'm not saying no judgment. Yes, but what it is, is that there is no hard and fast rule. There is no one way for it to work out. There right. really is no one way. There are general rules Every relationship that has lasted, they'll tell you they communicate, they compromise, they grow together. All of that nice, fancy, flowery stuff. Right. But at the end of the day, every relationship is as unique as the two unique people in it. Of course. So at the end of the day, you have to know what works for you and what felt right for you at the time. And if it felt right for you at the time, but it still didn't work out, you forgive yourself, you vex, but you say, you know what? I never felt forced. It never felt wrong. I did it because I decided to do it. It never worked. I saw it go. I agree. And I want to train one more. People need to follow their guts. Is that gut something there? Mm-hmm. Listen to it. It's right. And it took me a long while to trust my gut. True. But now I'm at a stage in life where my gut has led me in all the right directions. Well, to me at least. And a lot of the times when you feel that thing from that little thing in the beginning, if you stay in there all a year, it's the same thing come back, come by to an end. So if you feel so that so that's a thing. So if your gut is saying yes, 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 and it feels right, then I would say move with it. If your gut is a little upset, then I would say be a little cautious about it and play it and wait a little bit. Right. Oh boy. So Shari, it's not a dating um show. This is talk truth. But um, are you single now? Yes. You are single. Are yes. you looking? Yes. I want to say, yeah, we know what we mean by looking, right? <laughs> yes, You're not know. out of road, I look, man. No. But, <laughs> but if a good man approached you in this current phase of your life, yes. you would be open to date. Yes. For, 90, da- for 90 days? 
90 days only. Duh. 90 <laughs> days only. Jennifer Hudson. Yes, I do 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 like that song. And it's one night. It's, but one, okay. it's one night. It could, what, be, but it could be could, one night based be on our one. conversation. It could be one, yeah. All right, but you're open. Yes. And um, all right, we see your intention. Uh, where else I want to take you? I, I, I mean, I, I think we're really at the end of the show right now because mm-hmm. you really said all that you needed to say. Right. But um, any final words? For, for, for anybody dating, I mean, again, as we said, it depends on your phase of life. Mm-hmm. Because where I am now, in my 30s as a man, mm-hmm. I am in that whoever come next are the last, the one. last one. And the last one, mm-hmm. locked down, baby breed up, live in a house. Two and a half children, two and a half the whole children, thing. The giant, fence, giant the pets, accounts, everything. Everything <laughs> we do, right, you know, because time <laughs> I run short. And if I pick me now in my age, I'm going to run up and down behind them. And just, I'm going be, well, no, I'm going to be in the gym. I'm going to be a, a good up old man. But that aside, right. I'm going to be older if I have young kids with right. I start at this stage. Right. So for me, I am in that phase of exactly. let's do this. And if I was 18... I'd probably be in the phase of I'm not waiting 90 days. Right, exactly. And it depends. It's really, you do what you want to do, what feels right for you without the outside influence. It's easy to say that. It's easier said than done because we're all influenced by something at some point in some way. Right. To different degrees. But it's really, it was something that I was saying to you that I want to say now. You have, if you're going to have two grown people, Engaging in grown activities, you have to have grown conversations first. Amen. So have your conversations. You be honest. If you say, oh, I'm not interested in just sleeping with anybody. I'm at a point in my life where this is what I want. And if he heads for the hills, he was going to do it day 91 and you'd have wasted your time anyway. At least, you know, no, it go hurt your feelings, but you know. And if you say, if we have sex, we have sex, then that is what you have. That is what you do. You do it, you're upfront. And anybody who doesn't respond off top wasn't going to respond after day 90 anyway. I take your word on it. And and only thing I will say, re and again because I know you know your intention. When you say don't waste your time, I'm gonna come from this universal um view of every single experience has a wonderful lesson tied it to goes. it. So for me I think none of it is a waste of time. But if if you fall into the trap, one, two, three time, I hope you learn the lesson. Definitely. For the next time. Definitely. Shari Lee Crooks, thank you for your strong <laughs> opinions. What, what what sign are you? I'm an Aries. Aries. Strong woman. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much for being You're here on Talk welcome, Mario. And for giving me your time and your opinions. Yes. Later. Yes. All right, so that was our little candid and fun talk about the 90 day rule with my friend Shari Lee Crooks. And I hope that this episode for you, as fun and light and serious as it is, really makes you reflect on how you enter relationship situations and what you set as important for you in terms of communication upfront, really trying to determine if the person is honest or truthful or actually genuinely there for you before you decide to give up the things or give them the things whatever it is that you're doing and whichever role you play in the dynamic so you know guys be smart about your relationship decisions enjoy life to have some fun but be careful all right so the truth bomb question for this week is have you ever had sex in a public place (laughs) <laughs> this is a funny one it ties in quite nicely to the 90 day rule uh why well, let me spill the beans i would say that i've done the nookie in a semi-public place but not really public because not that people were walking around per se but it wasn't in a bedroom and it wasn't inside of a house it was outside of my yard but I don't know if I call it public. I forgot to define public. I'm not telling you no more. You're even not telling you no more. But I want you to tell me about what you've been doing. So hop over to Instagram. And the question will be in the stories. And you can give me the answer. I'll read it anonymously the following week. And um, let us know what you, where you've been doing it. Whether it's been inside or outside. It's either yes or no. Let us know. Of course, follow us on Twitter at TalkTruthJA. And if you are reposting a screenshot of our wonderful podcast that I know you love, please hashtag us as well at TalkTruth using hashtag TalkTruthJA. Follow me everywhere at Mario Evan on our social media. Hop over to Apple Podcasts or iTunes and leave us a star rating and a text rating. It really affects our ranking on the charts. Wow, I appreciate your support always, every week, week to week. We love it. We reach episode 14. What a journey. Thank you for the support, guys. You don't know already. This is Talk Truth. See you next Sunday. <laughs>